CompTIA ITF plus complete training course. Exam Objective 4.2 Given a scenario, use programming organizational techniques and interpret logic. While loop practice. Time to practice your new coding skills with some practice questions. These questions are specially designed to prepare you for the CompTIA ITF plus exam. Each question will contain pseudocode represented in different ways. Remember there are no hard rules on how to write pseudocode, and CompTIA likes to be a bit tricky. Ready, here is question 1. Examine the following pseudocode. What will be the output? If you want to try and solve this question on your own, pause this video now. Otherwise, I will go through the code line by line. In line 1, we declare a variable at num. In line 2, we set the variable at num to the value of 8. On line 3, we see a condition statement for a while loop. Our condition statement calls for our program to check if at num is less than 10. Since the value of the variable at num, which is currently 8, is less than 10, we will execute the code statements within the loop. The word, begin on line 4 is only used here to mark the beginning of the looped code statements. So let's continue on. On line 5, we will reassign the variable at num, with the current value of at num plus 1, resulting in a value of 9. Remember, this is a very important part of the while loop. Since the condition check of the while loop is based on the value of at num, if our loop does not provide a way for at num to be modified in some way that will eventually cause the condition to evaluate to false, we could find our code stuck in an infinite loop. On line 6, we have the word n to mark the end of the looped code statements. Now we head back up to line 3 and start the while loop all over again. This time we perform a reevaluation and check if at num is still less than 10. Since the value of the variable at num, which is currently 9, is less than 10, we will execute the code statements within the loop again. Next, we see the word begin, this opens our looped code. Then line 5 will increment our variable at num by 1 again, setting its value to 10. This is followed by the word end, which closes our looped code. And finally, we pop back up to the top of the loop to perform our condition check a third time. This time we see that our variable at num is equal to 10, but no longer less than 10, so our condition evaluates to false. This causes our program to move to the next line of code after the while loop. Which happens to be line 7. On line 7, our program prints out the current value of at num, which is now 10. So our answer to this question is 10. Here is question 2. Examine the following pseudocode. What will be the output? If you want to try and solve this question on your own, pause this video now. Otherwise, I will go through the code line by line. In line 1, we declare a variable myNum and assign it the value of 1. On line 2, we see a condition statement for a while loop. Our condition statement calls for our program to check if myNum is less than 2. Since the value of the variable myNum, which is currently 1, is less than 2, we will execute the code statements within the loop. The word, begin on line 3 is only used here to mark the beginning of the looped code statements. So let's continue on. On line 4, we will print out the value of myNum plus 4. This will cause the program to output the value of 5. On line 5, we have the word n to mark the end of the looped code statements. Now we head back up to line 2 and start the while loop all over again. This time we perform a reevaluation and check if myNum is still less than 2. Since the value of the variable myNum, which has never changed, is less than 2, we will execute the code statements within the loop again. But let me pause here for a moment. See anything wrong with this scenario? If you notice that we have an infinite loop, you are absolutely right. In this loop, there is only one statement, and that statement has the program output the value of myNum plus 4. This is not a reassignment statement. So myNum will forever remain at 1 and our while loop condition statement will forever evaluate to true. Now, when running a program that encounters an infinite loop, you are likely to see nothing printed as our program will fail. So just disregard the output of 5 we had a moment ago as the correct answer to this question would be nothing. Here is question 3. Examine the following pseudocode. What will be the output? If you want to try and solve this question on your own, pause this video now. Otherwise, I will go through the code line by line. 
In line 1, we declare a variable counter and assign it the value of 1. On line 2, we see a condition statement for a while loop. Our condition statement calls for our program to check if the variable counter is greater than 4. Since the value of the variable counter, which is currently 1, is not greater than 4, we will not execute the code statements within the loop. This causes our program to move to the next line of code after the while loop, which happens to be line 6. On line 6, our program prints out the current value of counter, which is 1. So our answer to this question is 1. Now that was an easy one. But in all honesty, I hope you find all while loops easy, now that you have had a little practice. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.